Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Feed My Sheep Earthquake Reports and More. I'm Terry Rempel. It's, what is it today? It's the 4th of January. Uh, it's been very, very busy. I've been collecting a whole bunch of data what's been going on in, uh, from what's been going on in Northern California. And we're doing a three-segment wrap-up of what's going on. It looks like the activity is finally dropping off. But what a spread of activity that we've had uh, major, major activity around Lake Tahoe, down into Mono Lake, um, and we're well down south, getting close to Bakersfield. We're down to Pismo Beach today with the spread of activity, kind of the final spread. You can see it tapering off. So we're going to do a recap, a three-program recap, because this was a big subduction event that spread throughout uh, northern California and into central California, um, just west of uh, or west of Bakersfield at Pismo Beach. Uh, we're going to get into that and then we're going to uh, come back after that three segment program. We're going to come back with uh, New Madrid. We're having some major activity through uh, South Carolina today. Um, big uh, fault shifts through South Carolina. We've seen some shifts uh, less so through the Mississippi, some activity in LA. Um, there's quite a bit going on with the New Madrid and just recently, so um, we're going to go get into that a little bit later as well. So hang on, we've got a few major programs coming up here. Uh, that looks like a series of four coming up uh, just today, so we'll get started with a prayer. Please join me. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you continue to provide this program, that you make it available for all of your listeners, your viewers, all that are drawn here, your children. And we thank you for the protection for it that you provide through your angels, um, through those that you have do good works for your service. And we ask that you take all glory for this program. This isn't of us, this is of you, this is for your service, and we thank you. Um, Jesus, we thank you for your leadership. You're guiding us um, through so many things that there are to learn, not just in earthquakes, but the major changes around the world. Um, there are the greatest um, acts of enslavement going on throughout the world um, through manufactured processes of uh, altering many many aspects of health and weather and it's done by design and uh, and it's done to attack monetary systems as well so we understand all of this we thank you for the deep understandings that we have um, and we thank you holy spirit um, for assisting in these understandings and uh, we we've got the leadership we've got the understandings we've got the oversight um, in all aspects given to us through God the Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, and all that we're led to, and we thank you so much for these things. Um, there are a great many changes coming, and Father, we continue to seek your protection, Jesus. We rely on you shepherding us through all the changes that are coming, and there are major changes coming. And we thank you for your continued protection, your love, your sacrifice, all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. So Sutter Buttes, we're going, just having a quick look back. What did we, uh, where did we begin all of this from? Was the 7.0, there's the Gorda Escarpment here, there's the Blanco Fracture Zone, or actually the Gorda Escarpment's here, there's the Mendocino Ridge coming in here. Um, they call this the Gorda Plate here, but it's not, it's really the uh, end of the Juan de Fuca Plate. And we had a subduction event with this whole area of um, oceanic plate being subducted underneath California. We had a stretch of earthquakes stretching from um, out to sea, uh, 39 miles out to sea and another uh, 40 miles or so inland. Um, a stretch, you could actually take an angle off of these earthquakes, and, and we'll look at that. And then we've had downstream effects from that. So here's that angle of earthquakes, and you can see it's got a dominant um, west-southwest to um, east-northeast angle. And that's perpendicular to the main faults. 
And uh, so it's underneath the continent. We understand that this is subducting, a subduction earthquake. It actually occurred, the main earthquake occurred here. You can see the large earthquake here. We had a follow-up secondary earthquake in this area. We had another one of 5.4 in this area. So the biggest earthquakes were right in this area, subduction um, zone earthquakes on land and just a mile a mile offshore, mile and a half offshore. So we've continued to see some large activity. This is, we saw the extent of this uh, extended very quickly uh, to Sutter Buttes. And there's how large the activity became at Sutter Buttes. Lots, this is an earthquake in, through here. We're seeing earthquake activity and we're seeing VLF fault movement. A lot of activity from Sutter Buttes. That's, uh, so the earthquake was on the, the 7.0, what we're calling a 7.0, not a 6.4. There was certainly so much um, damage to buildings, to roadways, to bridge abutments, um, that it was consistent with a 7.0 for damage. And the agencies... Uh, I'll, I'll remind you that the agencies, when they reassessed the Alaska earthquake that happened in 1964, they class, classified it initially as a 9. They raised that up to a 9.4 some 60 years later. So damage assessment is a major tool in reassessing earthquakes. And uh, with the amount of damage involved in the Ferndale and south of Ferndale, Rio Dell area, it was certainly consistent with the 7.0. And the uh, waveform, being a subduction earthquake, you're going to get much more vertical movement as one land, one plate bumps over top of another plate. And that vertical displacement is going to cause more damage. And it raises the magnitude of the earthquake. It's not all about the duration of the, uh, the major wave form, the S wave. Uh, it is not the only determining factor how hard it moves, how sharply, how quickly, and how much vertical stress you have as well causing building damage. That all comes into part of the assessment and that needs to be factored in by the professionals as well. And they certainly were coming out with uh, an estimate of size well before damage estimates came in. And if they're going to revise, come back 50, 60 years later and revise, uh, revise the Alaska earthquake, certainly they can revise upwards for this earthquake as they should. Um, now we're looking 12 miles northeast of Mount Shasta. And this is how large the activity got in and around Mount Shasta. That's a volcanic field up there. And it was reactivating, uh, showing lots of... Um, signs of reactivation, not just tremors, but magma movement. The north base of Mount Shasta became very active as well. You can see it right here. And that's an extreme amount of activity from that site. Um, Black Butte to the west base of Mount Shasta got to this level. And we're going to look at a few days today. We're going to be looking at uh, really um, the last uh, 10 days, I think, of earthquakes. Where are we at? The 26th here. So this is Black Butte, uh, the Black Butte area. It also had some fault shift activity, so you can see it through here. So we were seeing magma movement and fault shift. This, this view shows us the fault shift better, especially this VLF movement through here. Very low frequency waves. And south to four corners from Mount Shasta, we're a few miles west of Hat Creek. This site is not normally very busy, and it got extremely busy. So we're looking at it right here. And I'm sorry I can't enlarge these seismograms. It's, it just messes up the computer on my end, and you can look at one at a time, and we'll start a new show. Uh, it's just about the way it goes. Um, maybe we'll have the technology someday, but it's a, it's a small program here. Uh, five miles northwest of Paradise, look at the flare-up of activity. This is on the 27th. No, actually, it's on the 26th. I loaded it on the 27th. And this is what we were talking about. This is in the Sierra Nevadas. This is on the, uh, on the east side. And we've been talking about the Sierra Nevadas getting involved in reactivation. And that's what we're looking at here. It's not just um, shifting that we're looking at as part of this subduction event. It's also... Um, six days later, it's presented um, with the plate shift. It's presented new material underneath the Sierra Nevadas for conversion to magma. And that's applied to underneath the 
volcanic fields that are north of Mount Shasta, south of Mount Shasta, um, in and around Mount Lassen and south of Mount Lassen and getting into the Sierra Nevadas. Um, that's all su subduction built volcanoes through there, just like this, the uh, Cascades Range. They're older, they've been dormant longer, but Mount Lassen last erupted in, uh, was it uh, 1911 to 1913? Um, and it had been dormant beyond the time that, uh, I, I don't remember the dormancy period, but it was a long, long dormancy period and uh, it erupted and the agencies were saying, oh, it's never going to erupt, it's dormant. Um, but our science is a little better now, should be. Now we're uh, in the central Sierra Nevadas, east northeast of Sacramento, due north of Whitehall. So we're really central and a little bit on the uh, east side, but east central Sierra Nevadas. This is a huge amount of activity. So we had new met, new crust through the subduction process be presented underneath the Sierra Nevadas. So we had a shift of the plate south of the Mendocino, okay? A shift of the plate south of the Mendocino and north of the Mendocino. North of the Mendocino is going to reactivate all the areas Lassen and north. And, uh, and we saw very significant activity um, just about to Goose Lake. Uh, Tool Lake was super busy. We're, we're going to see a lot of this. But we had activity to the south, and we continue to see activity to the south. In the form of tremors now, the uh, volcanic activity has dropped off. Here we are, about 20 miles, uh, moving south about 20 miles. We're now due west of Tragedy Springs. We're in the uh, central Sierra Nevadas again. And this is a magma signal. This is not just tremors. We've got tremors up top. We've got tremors below. But we've got magma um, influx through the center. And now west of Cottage Springs by about five miles, still central near of that, Sierra Nevadas. This is a very much turned down size of ground. This should look much the same as this up top, but it doesn't because it's turned down. There's here you can see activity all along the baseline. You come down here, you see no activity along the baseline. The baseline of seismograms, if they're set correctly, should always show a tiny little bit of activity. And this one little bump and this one little bump do not signify a tiny amount of activity. They say show that this has turned down to maybe 10% of what it should be. So 90% down at the uh, blue BKHNZ site. Now we're uh, northwest of Mariposa and east of Bear Valley. We're on the east or on the west side of the Sierra Nevadas. We're in the Sierra Nevadas and we've got magma activity there. And this has continued. Um, this, there's a lot of activity through here. So we've, we're seeing a lot of reactivation of the Sierra Nevadas. And that's, um, that's giving us a sign of what is to come, because if it's doing this just relative to a 7.0 earthquake on the Mendocino, think how much it's going to reactivate when we actually get the bigger earthquakes that are upcoming. And there are bigger earthquakes. What we're seeing now is there are precursor earthquakes to the Cascadia that affect east-west faults. And because the east-west faults can be shown to be active active as part of this process. These are subduction earthquakes. S small subduction earthquakes are precursor to larger subduction earthquakes. And even though this was a damaging seven, um, an eight and a nine subduction earthquakes, uh, an eight is 10 times greater. That's an awful lot more damage. A nine is 100 times more damaging than a, than a seven. Um, west of Walker Lake in Nevada was very, very active. Through that period, we're still looking back on the 26th. And northeast of Double Spring in Nevada, we're still south, uh, southeast of um, Lake Tahoe. Very, very active. And Lake Tahoe is a, an area of concern because when we're getting reactivation of the Sierra Nevadas, we're also getting reactivation of the Lake Tahoe area. So we're south, north, 
and the whole east side or yeah west side the whole west side of lake tahoe are have all been active through this um through this period um following the 7.0 here's west of lake tahoe at the bunker hill butte site and it's i'm calling it bunker hill butte it's right beside hell's hole reservoir it's an obvious volcanic feature um, it's a butte, but they just call it Bunker Hill on the map. But when you look at it, you can tell it's a butte. It's volcanic. And North Lake Tahoe, this is right off the north end of the lake. And uh, very, very active there. And that's magma. That is underground magma. And it's also got fracturing above and below it, but it's uh, there's magma involved. And we're now north of uh, Lake Tahoe at Verde Peak. We're just on the Nevada-California border there. And now if we move to the west, we're about a mile north of Cisco Grove. And look at that activity, volcanic field reactivation. That's an area that's known to have uplift um, over the last few years. And Sierraville is a little bit to the north. You can see the tremors getting up there. So there's some uplift uh, fracturing involved um, in Sierraville as part of this back on the 26th and now south of Pyramid Lake in Nevada very very active um, I'm not sure if this includes magma or not because we've got a lot of vertical strikes through this um, rather than having uh, elevated uh, thickened baselines when we're looking at magma signals we're typically more looking more at um, this activity with not having the vertical aspect through here so you can see there's not as much vertical there is some but when we get to pyramid lake there's a lot more vertical aspect so this looks like more fault shift but uh, i expect there's magma involvement if this is uplift fracturing um, you're going to get a lot of that as well so this could be very significant uplift fracturing evolved um, here we are southeast of Termo near Highway 395. And that activity is not too much different from South Pyramid Lake. So there's South Pyramid Lake. And there's Termo. So a few miles southeast of Termo along 395. This is Stones Landing at Eagle Lake. Very, very active site as well. Again, that's all volcanic up in there. Um, and northwest of Termo at Diaz was very, very busy as well. East-northeast of Alturas, very active, never seen it like this before. I've never seen any of these sites get this active before. So this is a major big reaction to the 7.0. It's coming in some six, seven days later. We're seven days later on the 27th now, uh, 10 miles south of Thule Lake very active we're north of mount north uh, northeast of mount shasta now mount diablo where's mount diablo mount diablo um, is just east of san francisco um, it's uh, east of san francisco bay area north of san jose very active we're looking at earthquake activity at mount diablo it's knocking the seismogram for a loop. It can't handle it. So it's uh, we're seeing gaps in the data. A lot of activity, Mount Diablo. And that's on the 27th into the 28th. So activity has gotten to affecting Mount Diablo as well. West of Tragedy Spring in the Sierra Nevadas. We're still in the Sierra Nevadas seeing activity up there. So... Just incredible um, how much of activity there has been through the Sierra Nevadas with this event. And what I've been saying about the Sierra Nevadas being the same process, subduction design volcanoes or built volcanoes, built by the process of subduction, um, just as the Cascades are. They're a little older, but that doesn't mean they can't reactivate. And um, faults can behave in a transitional manner. What if you change the uh, stress applied to a fault, it can change from being a strike slip to a subduction fault. We've got that occurring in the Haida Gwaii area. Now we're south of the Mendocino, and I think we have transitional faults involved uh, 
also in California for there to be um, reactivation in the Sierra Nevadas that we're seeing from the seismic signals, there has to be new plate movement, and that means there has to be subduction applied to um, north and central California for that to occur. You can't get that refill without having the same production occurred that built the volcanoes in the first place. So we're having subduction over a larger area than what the professionals are saying. It's extending down into the central Sierra Nevadas, um, well south of the Mendocino Ridge, where uh, the professionals have said will not be affected by the Cascadia. Well, this is telling us that it will be affected by the Cascadia because it's a precursor event. It's affecting the north side of the Mendocino and the south side. Um, north America moves all as a as a unit, but it has wiggles in it. So at times, there will be um, more stress, more stress absorbed by the oceanic plates and by the land masses, where it, it will uh, lock up and stay absorbed and you'll have a large earthquake to the north or you'll have a large earthquake to the south while the north is locked up or the center will be locked up and you'll have one north and south. But there are times when we have massive earthquakes of North America when the whole thing moves at once. And that's what I think we're looking at coming up. And the professionals will argue till they're blue in the face that that doesn't occur. But catastrophic catastrophes do occur occasionally. Um, the truth of geology is that there's uh, catastrophic um, events happening in geology. It's not a nice gradual process as they uh, dictated. Uh, west, southwest, we're back at Mount uh, Diablo. And again, this is, this is the uh, 31st now. So we can see that there's continued activity at Mount Diablo. And... Uh, now we're going over to Miramar. We're, uh, we're east, southeast of, or southwest of San Francisco, right on the coast, and we're seeing VLF fault shifts at, v, at uh, Miramar. So there's a major fault there. This is maybe uh, four or five miles inland from the coast, and major fault shifts through that area. So I just wanted to point that out. That was a site that I had missed earlier, and I found that, so I dropped it in there. Northeast of Pinnacles in the Sierra Nevadas. This is back on the 31st. Um, so there's activity showing here as well. And down at Bear Valley, northwest of Mariposa, we can see on the 31st there was a major amount of activity there as well that dropped off, at least for a time. In Delhi, we see a 12 earthquake cluster. You know, there's already tremors throughout here, so it's full of tremors, but now we're seeing earthquakes, and there's 12 reportable-sized earthquakes, 1.0 and greater, um, maybe as large as 2.0. There's nothing large in this. These are all small earthquakes, but they're reportable. They're a cluster or a swarm, actually, because they're in a 24-hour period and not being reported. Okay, here's the two earthquakes that were reported, um, and these this was a 3.1 and a 3.9. So these two were reported, um, and these transferred were all the way east of Salinas, um, east of Monterey Bay, and it's showing up there. Um, much larger earthquakes, but look at the short duration of them. You look at uh, these signals up here, the duration is longer. Even though the amplitude is not as high, it's not as hard to hit. The hit is not as hard and as sudden. These are probably a little lower frequency, but they're certainly reportable sized earthquakes. And now we're uh, south of Monterey Bay. We're east of Garapata State Park to the south and uh, we can see those two earthquakes again. This is back on the 31st, and tremor activity beginning. We'll see more from uh, Garapata State Park later. You can see the increase. Uh, north of Big Sur, you can see there was some activity here, but it wasn't significant. It gets larger. And just north of Slate Hot Springs, this was more active. And so there you have significant activity uh, north of Slate's Hot Springs. We carried on south. We're south of Big Sur. So we're on the 31st now, and we're looking at Lake Tahoe in the Sierra Nevadas. Um, we're southwest. 
this is Alpine Village on the 31st. So Alpine Village itself got very busy. There's a major period of fracturing that goes from here on the blue line and through the red line. We've got an hour of uh, significant small tremors. Um, and then we've got more down here. Now, this is not, this is a turned down site. When you look at the baseline, there's no activity except this one tiny little bump on the blue. There's one tiny little bump on the red. So this site is only down, only responding maybe 15% of true, something like that, 10%, 15%. And look at the size of the activity. So this is major activity through Alpine Village, south of Lake Tahoe. They've just got the uh, seismogram turned down so it looks smaller than it ought to be. But it's always turned down. They don't want to... You, you hear this from seismologists all the time, from geologists. Don't panic the public. Don't panic the public. So what they do is they take a site like this. It's a very much a public access site where they're, uh, they're vacationing, they're skiing around Al Alpine Village, especially this time of the year, and they've got it turned down so it doesn't worry anybody. They know it's turned down, and they can make adjustments themselves and say, oh, well, this is all four times, five times bigger. This is six times bigger than what's presented. This is pretty significant, but at least the public isn't worried, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, the uh, seismologists, the agencies are all beholden to the governments, municipal, state, and federal governments, um, because that's where they get their funding. So their uh, objectives, as much as it is to uh, stay on top of what's going on with geological changes, it's to not worry the public, not bother insurance companies. Here we're northeast of Double Spring in Nevada. And there's a lot of activity north of Double Spring in Nevada. And here's Bunker, Bunker Hill west of central Lake Tahoe, well into the Sierra Nevadas. This is on the 31st, so you can see it's remaining active around Lake Tahoe now for four days. We started showing you with the 26th. We're on the 30th and 31st here. Um, this is North Lake Tahoe on the 30th. This site uh, not refreshed, so I put it in. But uh, this is the 31st here. So you can see they're still active around that uh, around Lake Tahoe. This is west of Susanville. And now northwest of Lake Tahoe is an area known by the agencies to have significant uplift over the last few years. So it's having magma inflation. It shouldn't be surprising that we're having an earthquake here that's showing up on this, uh, this lie 20 um, type seismograms that shows VLF movements better. So it's showing uh, one, two, three, four, five sets of VLF waves. There's another one there that's six. There's another one there that's seven VLF waves. Major fault shifts um, west of Susanville. And now going back to Mount Lassen, we're on the first, and that's when we had the 5.4, and that's the 5.4 that we're seeing right there. We can see there was major activity at Mount Lassen at the time. Now, this is an over-amplitude seismogram, but regardless, it's still major activity. And just southeast of Clear Lake Volcano now, major activity just southeast of Clear Lake. And that's where we're going to end this first segment. We're going to go down to McKinleyville, back up to the top, and see what changes that we have, see where the spread is. If I haven't shown you seismograms in, uh, in the... Northern uh, California, Central California area, if I haven't shown them to you, it's because they haven't been active. I'm showing you the major act active sites, the ones that are important. Um, and uh, when I'm showing you new sites, it's because activity has gone to those new sites. And that's what we're going to show you in our next program, which uh, will start right after this one. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, we hope you're liking this series approach. Hello, Sam. There, goodbye, Sam. <laughs> no, I always got to have Samuel. And uh, the intent of this is to show you the flare-up and how it backs off. We're tracking the activity, and this activity does back off. We didn't ever say it was going to escalate into a massive earthquake. It is a step forward 
towards larger activity when we start seeing small subduction events. And that's what we're seeing. We now realize that the 7.1 in Ridgecrest, since it affected an east-west, primarily east-west Garlock Fault, um, and exposed that one that they didn't even know of in such a well-studied area as Cal Southern California. They didn't know about this massive long Garlock Fault a transverse fault to the main fault trend. And what we're seeing with this activity is we're seeing active activity of east-west faults, again, primary east-west faults, this time Mendocino and subduction involvement rather than surface involvement. So this is a big deal. Um, and we're seeing a spread of activity that we that is consistent with subduction in that it caused a flare-up of activity through the central Sierra Nevadas and it caused a flare-up at many other volcanoes as well, such as Sutter Butte's Clear Lake Volcano, um, and uh, also, um, what, is, what else flared up? Uh, Mono Lake, Mono Lake and Lake Tahoe areas flared up. So major activity, major changes following six and seven days after the 7.0, and that's stress transfer, the transfer and shifting of plates are going to present new material to the volcan volcanoes and they're going to present as magma. That's we're seeing why we're seeing a flare-up all around Mount Shasta and Mount Lassen and through the volcanic fields going east from there. Medicine Lakes in there and other volcanoes, uh, timbered uh, crater and there's all kinds of volcanic features. There's a lava bed state park in there as well. Anyway, um, we'll get back to you shortly. Um, and if you're missing, I'm not spending a lot of time on any one aspect because, because there's so many aspects, so many locations to cover. If you need to have a look at anything, um, just stop your phone, back it up, and look again. This is major, major stuff. And if you, uh, if you need to use a magnifying glass on your phone to look at some of these seismograms that are right close to you, then you can see just how, close, how busy this actually is. It's major, major active. All right. So we'll get back to you shortly, and bye for now.